Hi there. Today, I would like to share with you a story, a story that revolves around three letters, H, F, C. What is an HFC? But before we get to that, allow me to show you this image, this image of the mass burial site for Yolanda victims in Tacloban Leyte. For those of you who have had the opportunity to see this in person, there is no emotion that evokes anything quite like this one. This is the unnecessary fate that awaits each and every one of us if we do not act now to stop climate change. Our world is sick. Much like the human body when it experiences fever, the body warms by around one degree Celsius and it starts to exhibit abnormal behavior. That's basically what's happening with our planet right now. Abnormal behavior, the likes of which we have not seen in our modern history. And it's all because of all of these greenhouse gases. Um, CO2, methane, N2O, water, vapor, and ozone. This is the result of 300 years of negligence. This is the result of our society prioritizing economic advancements over environmental sustainability. This is a prime example of how our actions in the past are echoing into the ripples that we are feeling in the present and the future. Now back to my original question. What is an HFC? What is this talk exactly about? Is this an HFC? It's around 1 p.m. right now, and I'm sure some of us are still hungry for hot fried chicken, but that's not exactly what I'm talking about. What about this HFC? Some of us may enjoy watching this combat sport, others not so much, but that's not exactly what I'm talking about either. What I'm talking about when I mention HFCs is the thing that is found in your air conditioning units and refrigerators. The thing that is found in the air conditioning units that is cooling this very hall right now. HFC stand for hydrofluorocarbons. They are completely artificial substances that are used to help operate your cooling equipment, such as your refs and air cons at home and even at work. HFCs are also found in your supermarkets. They are what helps keep your products fresh and safe for consumption when you buy them. HFCs are also found in your mobile air conditioning units. They're also found in your fire extinguishers and also in your industrial cleaning solvents. Basically, HFCs are an important part of modern life, especially in urban areas where all of these activities are happening at the same time. HFCs were manufactured in the first place because these two substances, CFCs, HCFCs, both of which used to be cooling agents that also power your refs and aircons, but they have been phased out way back starting in the 1980s because they contribute to the depletion of the ozone layer. CFCs and HFCs were specifically phased out under the Montreal Protocol which is one of the most successful international environmental agreements in our history. And that's why HFCs were manufactured in the first place. Basically, HCFCs, it's kind of like Superman. They're hidden, it's among us, you don't really notice it. But when you know what it can do for you, it's kind of like a superhero. It's one of the things that keeps us from dehydration or sweating as much in this room or outside. HFCs is kind of like a super greenhouse gas. And speaking of the Montreal Protocol, there's been a recent study that shows that this international agreement actually works. That's why I mentioned earlier, it is one of the most successful international environmental agreements in our history. The ozone layer is healing, at least in the upper stratosphere. And that is directly correlated to the decline in CFCs and HCFC emissions. This is the premium example of how humanity can actually work together to solve the environmental crisis. If that narrative sounds familiar to you, 
It's because it's the exact same thing that needs to be done when it comes to easily the most threatening environmental issue we have right now, and that's climate change. Okay, so HFCs helps cool our environment, at least in the interior. Montreal Protocol, successful international agreement. So why do we need to talk about HFCs if HFCs do not deplete the ozone layer in the first place? Well, let me explain to you exactly what the difference is between CO2 and HFCs. Carbon dioxide is easily the most abundant, anthropogenically emitted greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, 65%. HFCs, less than 1%. Not a big deal, right? Well, what if I tell you about the, green, the global warming potential, or GWP, of these greenhouse gases? The GWP is an indicator of how powerful a, a greenhouse gas is, specifically how much it can trap in terms of heat in the atmosphere. For CO2, the GWP is one. It's sort of the reference when comparing the power of the other greenhouse gases. The GWP of HFCs, however, it can reach up to 14,800. Granted, most HFCs GWP values range more from like hundreds to four digit numbers. But HFC 23, which is a very common HFC that is used around the world, including here in the Philippines, has a GWP of 14,800. That means, that means that this greenhouse gas is 14,800 times more effective as a greenhouse gas than CO2. That is a very big deal. And what's even worse, HFC emissions are increasing, 8%. But this figure is four years ago. You have to imagine this number has to be doubling or even increasing. Not necessarily doubling, but increasing as we speak. While CO2 emissions, mostly 2%, still increasing, but not as drastic as 8%. I showed you this image earlier that HFC is kind of like a super greenhouse gas. And now that you know what HFC is truly capable of when it comes to impacting our environment, this image takes on a whole different meaning in that HFC is in fact a super greenhouse gas in every sense of the word. Here's the bottom line. Our world is warming right now. That's a fact. But in, in, in terms of trying to cool ourselves off, we try to stay in malls because it's cool, because there's air cons everywhere. And I bet some of you are happy right now that we are in, these, in this venue because it's very cool compared to the outside. And on hot summer days, which, most of which are going to occur in the next few weeks because it's the summer season here in the Philippines, you would like to get your ref in, at home or at work or get yourself some ice cold beverage or dessert, like ice cream just to cool yourselves off. You need cooling equipment to cool ourselves down. That's part of life. But if you operate more cooling equipment like this, as currently constituted, there will be more HFC emissions, and therefore, more warming. This seems like a catch-22 cycle, the likes of which, without proper interventions, will be trapped and will keep getting worse and worse in the next few decades. That is a very important deal, especially nowadays when every ounce of climate action matters. And speaking of climate action, the Paris Agreement is sort of the standard right now when it comes to, well, not really standard, it's actually the landmark for climate action around the world. The goal of the Paris Agreement is to limit the temperature increase around the world to well below 2 degrees Celsius and pursue efforts to limit that increase to 1.5. Why 1.5? Because there are a lot of studies that show that if our world warms beyond 
that's it. There is no returning anymore. It's irreversible. It is very difficult right now to project or even predict the impacts of climate change as it is currently constituted. What more can we expect to predict accurately as much as we can if the world warms by way on 1.5? Imagine two or three degrees Celsius of warming. That's a very scary thought. And right now, our world has warmed by around one degree Celsius. I'm rounding up. In 2017, the temperature anomaly recorded is around 0.84 degrees Celsius or 0.8. In 2016, the record is actually 0.94, which is very close to one, but that is an El Nino year. What I'm saying is the last two years have been the warmest years on, rec on our modern record since the 1850s. The world is warming. There is no question about that. Imagine all of these Yolandas, all of these Ondois, the forest fires in California, the rising sea levels, the war in Syria that's partially influenced by droughts, which is because of also climate change. All of this happened at around a one degree warmer world. What happens if it reaches two or three? It's a very scary thought. But what if I tell you that if we can minimize HFC emissions, if by some reason, we can reduce our emissions, for example, by like 90% in the next few decades. We can prevent a 0.5 degrees Celsius increase in temperature. 0.5 degrees Celsius. Again, at one degree Celsius, that's a very big effect on our world. What if we can prevent half of that from happening? And that's why HFC face down is a very important part of climate action right now, and a very understated one as well. And that is the point of what we call the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol. It's an addition to an already successful environmental agreement. The amendment being named after uh, the city in which it was adopted in uh, Rwanda in Africa, the Kigali Amendment. And the goal of this amendment is to face down HFCs. Why not face out HFCs? And this brings me to my original point. Our world is changing so fast right now that it is becoming more and more difficult for us to keep up in terms of adapting to these changes despite all of the advancements in green technologies, despite the advancements in solar energy, despite advancements in wind energy. It's becoming more and more difficult to keep up. But solutions are at work. They're currently being developed, and in some countries, they are already implemented in small scale. HFC face down can prevent half a degree increase in temperature. It's a big deal. What can we all contribute to this HFC face down that I'm talking about? It all starts with being a smart consumer. Energy efficiency. Here in the Philippines, energy efficiency beyond LEDs, beyond those kinds of light bulbs, they're kind of a foreign concept to most people, most consumers. But if we know what we're purchasing, if we know what we're getting for our money, for our money's worth, it can really make a difference. If you have time to whip up your phones and look at Facebook or Instagram for like five minutes a day, not really five minutes a day, that's even more here in the Philippines, if you have time to whip up your phones for social media, you have time to Google, on your, to Google on your phones about what kinds of equipment you're buying. If you go to your appliance store, look at these refrigerators, air conditioning units that you're using. What kind of cooling agent are they using? Is it HFC? Is it an alternative to HFC? There may be even some CFC still out there. We're not exactly sure about the general state. And that's one of the problems, the lack of comprehensive data here in the Philippines and perhaps in other developing countries. Also, you can look at, can these equipment really save me money when it comes to per hour electricity consumption? Basically, here's the benefit. If you purchase more energy efficient appliances, you turn up the lights, all those stuff, but let's stick to refs and aircons, for example. 
if we purchase more energy efficient appliances, lower emissions. HFCs down, CO2 down. Also, lower costs. In short, yay, everybody wins. The current market in the world right now is trending towards greener technologies, which means these suppliers of these equipment will also earn more profit. Everybody wins. And when it comes to climate action, it's so easy right now to dive towards that new trend of renewable energy or any other policy that relates to green solutions, when we're not even considering the aspects of that particular action. But here we have a clear framework of how it could possibly work. It's very doable. And again, half a degree you can prevent, it's a very big step for climate action. Again, as I mentioned, there are several viable alternatives to HFCs. Again, you might see carbon dioxide and you might think to yourselves, CO2, isn't that a greenhouse gas? But actually, it can be an alternative to HFCs. And that's part of the ongoing research. In fact, here in the Philippines, there are some industrial companies that are doing research to make sure that these equipment, aircon, refs, powered by alternatives to HFCs become commercially viable in the next five to 10 years. It is possible, it's very possible. I would like to point out that all revolutionary ideas in history, steam engines, computers, cars, they all started and became a very important part of our current lives because everyone is involved from development to consumption. Ideas were pitched, innovations were made, and we all lived to live another day. We only have one world to live in. Mars sounds nice, but if we don't have oxygen in Mars, we're gonna die. And for another thing, none of us, and no one who has ever lived, will even have a chance to see even 1% of what this world is capable of providing for us. The sceneries, the treasures, the resources, the wonders, it's an infinite number of possibilities. And if you look at any paradigm, social, philosophical, religious, political, we have the moral responsibility to protect our planet. So why not start now? I would like to leave you with these two quotes. It's not cool to be cool anymore, and it's too hot to be hot. <laughs> Climate action starts now. Be, a, be climate smart, be energy efficient, and more importantly, be a sword of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of HFC. Tashi delay, lamuan kata.